Uh, my name is Marko Casagrande. I come from Finland. I'm an architect. Um, <clears throat> I have to tell a little bit about my background. I come from the very north part of Finland, from Lapland. I grew up there in a border between village people and nomads. Um, we are running a small practice in Finland, which is focused in architecture and innovation. We are dealing with cities, and our goal is uh, urban ecological restoration of existing cities. The first project is called Treasure Hill. It's an unofficial settlement in uh, Taipei City, Taiwan. I was invited there to make outlines for uh, ecological restoration for urbanized Taipei Basin, but I found out that the data, what the official city was given to me, uh, was more or less useless. It was like a manual of a machine. So I started to go into this uh, unofficial settlements and see, try to understand what is the local knowledge of Taipei. And uh, this particular settlement, Treasure Hill, was uh, under demolition. The same city government that has invited me there was uh, destroying this settlement. <clears throat> when I went inside Treasure Hill, I found out that inside this unofficial settlement is many of these values that the official city is asking me actually to uh, announce for them. They were uh, recycling all their organic waste, composting it for the farms. They were doing urban farming for uh, getting food. Uh, they were harvesting uh, garbage from the city, recycling it, selling it back. They were stealing a little bit of water, but not too much just a little, not to annoy the official city too much. And then they clean the dirty waters with patches of jungle, make it clean again, take it to the farms. They also steal electricity, but not too much, just a little. And so it's a very sustainable city form, but same time, the official city was destroying it. Uh, in Treasure Hill was living uh, 400 households. Uh, when I arrived there, they were all already quite old, uh, old veterans from the civil war of uh, China. So I, my program was to reverse the destruction process of the official city. So I restarted the farms and I restarted making connections between the half-destroyed houses so that this um, urban organism could circulate again. As you know, with any, any organism, if the circulation is cut down, you will just slowly die. And this was intended also for Treasure Hill. So I had to restart the circulation. Chinese are referring to it as acupuncture. So all these uh, interventions are very small scale and very fast. I was using wood mainly, building up uh, steps, make the connections and together with the local people, start the farms. I had to get manpower, which I didn't have, so I was going in uh, local universities, recruiting students. In the end, we had 200 students. Then I needed construction material, so a group of uh, maybe four or five really beautiful girl students went to a construction site, which was next to this place, explain we, what we're doing with local people. So the construction workers start to steal material for us. They were going to the construction site with the trucks and offload maybe 10%, which we take and start making this. So immediately when the normal people sense that we are working with the local knowledge, they start to participate. And this is not a design question, it's an energy question. Treasure Hill is a, it's a ruin. Ruin for me is a very positive thing. It is something that uh, the human control is uh, opened up. And when the human control is opened up, nature can step in. So uh, co-architect in Treasure Hill is nature. This is very important. So many of the solutions what the normal people do is sort of half finished. Nature will continue from the half finished and then make, for example, a window little bit more about ruin. I started to uh, feel very impressed how, how this local knowledge, which is more or less the opposite of the official, 
Official means central control. Local knowledge is organic, and this organic local knowledge is connected with nature. It is the normal ways how to live on a site together with nature, not against nature. If you go against nature, you waste energy. People want to be lazy. Um, so then I start to think that what, what it means that uh, if you have the official city, you have these punctual interventions, unofficial cities or unofficial urbanism inside the city, performing urban acupuncture for the existing city. So what does it want? It's obvious that the nature only wants that the city becomes part of nature. And uh, the local knowledge through this urban acupuncture is performing for that. People do it unconsciously. They, it's, it's not a big plan. There is nothing behind it. Ne there is no method. Uh, it is just happening. It's natural. This is Mrs. Chen, who is the uh, matriarch of Treasure Hill. Many of the, all, I would say most of the urban farming communities, urban nomad communities are matriarchal. City is a very patriarchal system, and the more official it gets, the more patriarchal it gets. But these organic settlements, they are matriarchal. Usually you have a, let's say, anarchist grandmother who is running the show. In this case, is uh, Mrs. Chen. So uh, when we pin pinpointed this uh, understanding, of course, we started to interview these kind of uh, local knowledge professors like Mrs. Chen or some uh, fishermen who've been living together with Urban River all their life. So after Treasure Hill, I was uh, given a professorship in a Taiwanese university called Tamkang University in the architecture department, where they encouraged me to go further with the... of. Uh, when acupuncture, thinking of uh, local knowledge and the thinking of the third generation city. In the end, uh, we were collaborating with so many different disciplines, including sociology, anthropology, biologists, horticulture, media, and so forth, and local people, that actually being in architecture department was not, not enough. Um, so we set up an independent research uh, unit research center called Ruin Academy. This is the image of that. Uh, when we entered there, we wanted to ruin the building. It was uh, five floors high, so we took uh, all the walls away from inside, and then we start drilling holes, holes through the whole building, so that it can rain inside. Because, uh, you know, if you have water, light, and topsoil, then things start growing. But on the other hand, we also wanted to manifest that we need to break this control. We need to break architectural control and the official control. Otherwise, nature cannot be. Uh, like you see here, we knocked off all the windows also, just inspired by Treasure Hill and grew bamboo, so that the bamboo is uh, keeping the storm waters outside, keeping the noise outside. We knock off the bottom floor so that trees can start growing. Here is the bamboo for the windows, one bed. Some places for students to work, they also sleep there. And they have gardens here and there where the water can come and they are growing up things. Here is a student garden and fireplaces. Fire is essential, of course. On the top floor of the Ruin Academy, we have a public sauna. I am from Finland, so this is a necessity, of course. But uh, yeah, it's the best sauna in the Pacific. But it's kind of like a hard core of our thinking. Get naked and go there. Yeah. This is a big inspiration. It's an urban bonsai. It looks like a very little thing, but it's a very, very important thing. You have some... Uh, seams in the elements, and uh, they are collecting some dirt, topsoil, some water, and it knows exactly how much uh, sunshine it gets, how big are the winds. So it regulates itself. It, it don't want to come bigger. This is it. If it grows bigger, then maybe the winds take it down. This is a bigger sister or brother or son of it, just the opposite side of a street. This is uh, five floors high, and uh, we use a um, structural engineer to 
where are the routes going? The routes have two systems. One is going to the sewage uh, water circulation of the house, and the other one is going to the concrete slabs and using the house as the structure. So it is completely using the human activity as a living source. It knows how much toilet is used, and it is using that. It is using people. It's also using architecture as the growing platform. So this is uh, a third generation uh, condition now. Human, human nature and nature sharing the same architectural uh, spot. This happens everywhere in nature, of course. The only rule of nature is existence maximum. It wants to produce maximal life in a given conditions, in all scales. This is what people do. This is real urban acupuncture in, in Taipei. They see that, okay, here is a construction site and nothing happens. If nothing happens, the anarchist grandmothers attack. And they change it into a garden. This is the most expensive land in Taipei. Three banks have been fighting for it for 30 years, but none of them get to the control. So the anarchist grannies, they control. Here is all the uh, uh, unofficial urban farms and collective gardens of Taipei. So this is the actual map of urban acupuncture. These are the urban acupuncture points where people and communities are ruining the industrial city in order to turn it towards the organic, towards the third generation city. Taipei Basin, totally urbanized. This is the solution what official city has. Other side is human. Then you build a 12 meters high reinforced concrete wall. Other side is nature. No connection. Some topics what we've been uh, discussing with the Ruin Academy, illegal architecture, urban acupuncture, river urbanism, urban nomad, organic machine, parasite urbanism, and local knowledge. But all these are based on uh, real issues. It's not academic inventions by us. It's what real people are really doing. Then, uh, just to show an example, short example, what local knowledge can do. Uh, this is from uh, South China in, in Shenzhen. I went there and uh, asked the migrating workers, because they come from countryside, that if you come from countryside, you must have local knowledge. You've been living together with nature all your life, farmers, so on. They are doing those uh, buildings officially there. But then I asked, like, what can you really do? And these guys were coming from a province of Guangxi, and they say that uh, we can do anything out of bamboo. So I just uh, sketch something, and they start working. Totally lazy, totally weak, no effort, and these fantastic uh, organic shapes come, and uh, no tools, just bamboo, fire, and water. And they can do this. Inside, actually, they wanted to have a kind of uh, unofficial lounge for the migrating workers, like a social club for karaoke and things like that. So this is their cocoon for karaoke. Outside is the official city, and when you go inside, the official city really like disappears. Yeah, it disappears. Although the fabric is so lightweight and almost nothing, it's so powerful, so all the sky skyscrapers are gone. And uh, like all these works, if, if, if I'm working with the local people, it's more or less totally improvised. It's just a dialogue, and these kind of things are growing up. In the nighttime, they are setting up a construction light, one construction light, and it turns out to become a disco. Yeah, fantastic. Here you see, karaoke event is uh, cooking up. And also this. This is what local knowledge can do. This is what an architect in the office cannot do. Uh, from the beginning, they know that they're not going to finish this building. Nature will finish it. And they understand how nature will work from the very first start. So they just do the primary structure, and then nature grows on it and finishes it up. So nature is the co-architect. Then the conclusion of uh, these kind of uh, studies, parasity, uh, 
Taipei city government asked us to design a new, new kind of uh, urban model, like a parasite that can grow into the, or, uh, into the city and start curing it up, turn it into organic. Here we have an island which is flooding. To the island, we are building up a wooden primary structure. We leave it unfinished so that people can start moving in. This is the basic structure, six times six times six meters, but we leave it empty. Becomes uh, some sort of an urban organism and people start moving in, making it ready, like the nature did with the previous work. So it becomes some kind of a human mangrove. We give the primary structure, but that's it. People will finish their city, they start farming on top of it. Inside is the primary structure. Flooding can come, no problem. We leave the first floor empty instead of this. Then it can start growing to the city from a punctual point. This is one module now, six times six times six meters with wooden joints, no metal, nothing. You just join them together, one cube, two floors, more cubes, more and more cubes, and then you have a city here. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>